am at the spot where we left off. I'm actually going to add my glue to the base. I think, let me get this unstuck. Apparently we've got issues. There must be a glue sp There's a glue gunk up in here because it did not work very well. Pull that out of the mold and we're going to set that around the mold, just like that. So it cups in around it, like so. Okay, add a little water, add a little glue, if I can get this glue up to work right. I think I got it. Glue gunk. Let's get that glued in much better. Yes, glue. That's what we need. So we're going to do that. And you know, I forgot a very crucial step. I really did. But you know what? It's okay. We we can do it. It's it's not too late. It is not too late. As a matter of fact, I think I like the idea better. So make sure you've got your embellishment cupped around that and let that dry. Uh, let me move this camera. That'd be easier. Uh, let that dry. And... Uh, I'll be back. I'm going to make a few of these. I'm going to let this one dry and I'm going to make a few more and we'll go to the next step.
for now but I have one more part of the process that needs to take place and that is to do a full covering back on these and so I'm gonna roll out some clay and I'm gonna texture it and then we'll go from there Watch me lay down the clay. I used um, some texture mats that I recently purchased from uh, Disorganized Crafter. So I uh, will try to leave a link in the description below for this uh, texture stamps that I used. Uh, this one here is a steampunk with a uh, dress form or a what you call it. I can't think of the name, but you can see it. I've got a world map here, and it's kind of hard to see but it's a world map. Let's see if you can see that. There you go. It's like a world. And then I've got the uh, gears and whatnot there. And then these are, even though they're texture mat, they'll be great for doing some uh, air dry clay or some acrylic, some epoxy acrylic. 
And of course, they, there's that dress form with a better view of it. So I got those four. I was thinking I got five, but I guess I didn't. And let's see. Since I'm showing you that, I might as well show you the other two of molds that I got. These are all Stamperia, by the way, that I got. Again, these are beautiful molds. These are perfume and purses. And I just think they're super cool. So I'll be doing some, <coughs> excuse me, epoxy resin and or air dry clay on those. And then I've got the little angels and hearts and just the little bubbles. That one says joy. But um, I think they're super cute. And this was the first time that I've delved them out and played with them myself. I just recently got them. Um, so I was excited to put them on the back of these uh, embellishments. Um, you'll notice that I did some different, uh, I did use those uh, silicone mats and they worked out great but I kind of messed up on this one because I forgot to powder it. So always remember to powder your silicone uh, mats before you throw anything in there. So, uh, or a mold release or whatever. But I'm letting these dry. I, I painted them with gesso so once these dry then i'll put some paint to them themselves and i need to leave them upside down because they're still drying uh, i'll use my heat gun i went ahead and painted the tops of these um just because i haven't done the bottoms yet but um this one's done but i still got to do texture on these to close them off but i figured when, since i already had the gesso out i might as well do that real quick and finish up what i had but I'll get back to that. And I want to put a disclaimer out. This air dry clay, I thought it was my normal air dry clay. But this has got a bit of a, a tan tone to it. And I'm used to mine being stark white. It says it's white. So I don't know. It is white. But it seems like when it dries, it dries really dark compared to what I'm used to seeing my air dry clay dry. So I don't know if it's just this particular lot or if maybe it's gotten too warm in my truck a time or two. So either way, I had to fight with it with some water, which I normally don't have to. So I'm thinking that it's gotten dry in my truck. So you probably won't have that same issue, but I did because I had a lot of cracking, which I'm not used to having. I'm used to the clay being very malleable and smooth, but I had cracking issues with this ones, but uh, they'll dry nice and I'm gonna go ahead and dry these up and then I'm gonna get out some paints. First thing I'm going to do with this particular one, this is my rust. I'm going to paint it completely black as well as the clock, the three. Well, might as well do that. I might as well do them all. I'm going to, I gessoed them, but I'm going to paint them in black now for a base coat. So let's get that done. And I'm using Waverly's chalk paint. And since this is my rust dome with some patina, I am going to match that on the outside. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. I may like it, I may not, but it, it's an experiment. Um, I'm probably going to have to stir this up because it's been sitting a minute. And uh, this stuff can indeed dry up, but it's doing pretty good. I don't guess I need to add any water right now it's doing okay I think so I'm just gonna stir this up and this is the the brown 
base and you probably won't see the texture if I I'm probably gonna try not to cover the whole thing because um, I want that texture on this to come out but we'll see how it works we'll see I'm just gonna dab it even gonna let some of the crusties be a little thick because that's the sand grit inside of the paste so we're gonna clean that I'm only using one brush I only have so many brushes I have a lot of brushes but I only designate uh, these because I don't want them mucked up <laughs> so, I'm clean that off and then I'm gonna stir this one this is the orange rust paste Not too shabby. There we go. Just dabbing it out. There we go. be back okay I've got my yellow here I've even I'm just gonna dab it with this because I don't want too much I'm not worried about the glass the glass can be cleaned off I don't want so much on there it just takes away from it so and then here's a little red to give it that final little rust look put a little more brown on that and a little more orange and once this dries it will look a lot better when it dries bit of orange we'll just throw a little orange in there too just needs a little bit just to lighten it back up those dark colors there we go and we will let that set dry and then I'll clean that that dome and then we'll decide if we're going to throw any patina on it or not. We will see. I love these little jars. I got these little jars at the Dollar Tree. And I love that it's a perfect amount for my rust crust. And they're doing better than the little tin cans I'd gotten from the Dollar Tree. So I was really excited to find these. And, and I hope I can find more. So we'll just let that dry and then I'm going to start on some of these others.
did a few of these. I didn't do any of the flowers yet, but I will get to those. Um, I'm also going to make some to where they're blank. And if you guys are interested, maybe I can sell them to you or whatever. And then you can paint them the way you want to. Or make your own. Either way, this is just what I have. And I thought I would share that with you. Uh, this one was kind of fun. I see something like this on some sort of a journal, steampunk journal book. Um, or as a dangle of some sort. Might be able to put a, a, a pen in there, an eye pen, and make a, a, a medallion or something out of it. It would be kind of cool. And um, I'll have to get some alcohol and some of this permanent leafing. But... Uh, Overall, I think they turned out pretty cool. Let me just zoom in. Here is the number three. <laughs> the three. And I, I didn't mind the crack in this because I think it gives it character. And that's why I, I somewhat filled it in, but I left it. I just thought it was kind of cool. And this was the process that it takes to make these. It's not a, a short process. Um, and, and because I do work out of my truck, I semi let them dry when they're still in clay form. Uh, you can let yours dry overnight and make sure they're good and sturdy and hard. They will be, get that way anyway. But the only thing I have left to do is to glaze these and seal them. So they're painted. Uh, I might throw a little more rust crust on that. I don't know. It looks pretty good. I wanted to put some metals back into the rust because I wanted it to uh, kind of go with the foil underneath there. I did a little silver and I did a little bit of gold. Uh, that way the rust kind of comes through. So, but I think it's pretty cool. I love this one. I think this one's super cool. Look at my hands. You, it's not a clean thing. You can wear gloves if you want to. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. And then here's the keys. And I did a little bit of copper metallic, black metallic, antique gold and gold. There's rose gold and copper. And, and that's what I used. I used the same old colors from Folk Art. And then I topped them off with some of these deco leafing pens. Um, off camera, I'll probably do these, uh, these right here, but, uh, I don't know. You saw the ones I made in the beginning that were colorful and bright and cheery. These are antique-ish and gold and, and look like aged metal. So, I just thought that you might be interested in seeing these. And, uh, these will be for sale eventually. So, or... I might give some, but, uh, and I'm going to do some projects with some of these. So, uh, anyways, I'm in really at, almost at the end of this series and, um, I may come back later with a couple of extra dome ideas instead of just paper on the back and instead of foil, I've got a couple of other DIY styles, uh, to do the backgrounds with. So I don't know when I'll get to that, but right now we've got the clock. You know, I still got script. I've got tickets. You know, I've got all kinds of stuff to do. But they take a little bit. So I do have to do these a little bit at a time. And I was thinking I did more than five. But I guess it's just because I haven't painted these yet. So I'll just have to go one by one and see what I want to do with these other ones here. And then I'm going to make some for blank canvases. And I still have to do the back of them. So they're not... Uh, they're not done yet and I did do that texturing and encase them and made sure they were solid so that's what I'm going to do with these two okay so thank you for watching I had a lot of fun making these I hope you enjoyed watching it I know the video is probably a little bit longer than I intended but I wanted to not put all of it so much in time lapse I really wanted to explain it to you and let you see how much work really goes into these things so that's why it's not completely time lapse this time so anyway you guys have a beautiful morning noon and evening and I hope you make you some rust crust and I hope you make you some uh, domes and I hope you have fun with this process and don't forget you can use uh, the Lisa Pavelka metal molds or the silicone molds for trims and um, I'm, I was still perfecting this process as 
I created it. So I hope you like it and I think I'm going to love it. So you guys have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.